Welcome to the Square Mile Roastery Tour. I have been promising you this for a long time, actually. So I've finally gotten around to doing it. Now the outside of this building is not particularly beautiful. Uh, after we had to relocate, we needed just a great space to work with. And I think inside here, we got to build something we're really proud of. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through aspects of how this roastery works, what we do here, the different kind of um, bits of kit we have, different processes we do. We're gonna get a little bit nerdy about how a roastery works. The sound inside the building is not very good. It's lots of noisy stuff happening. So I'm not gonna do it in a kind of vloggy style walk around. Instead, I'm gonna take you to different points in the roastery and explain how they work and what's going on. So let's go. Now, the idea behind this whole roastery was that we found a big, empty building and we thought we should build a building inside the building. And that's what we did. So you have this sort of central structure and then around the edges, lots of fun stuff. Along one side, near the loading bay, is where we store all our green coffee. Mostly this goes into racks here, uh, some's on the floor, some is kept closer to the roasters as well. We don't keep all the coffee we have here, but we keep a good amount of it there. At the end of all of that, is the kind of main production space where the roasting machines are. Well, let's talk about those roasting machines. We run two production roasters, and the first is this G75. It's a restored vintage probat, and 75 refers to its capacity of 75 kilos. The UK drinks a lot of espresso-based coffee, and so this machine pretty much just roasts coffee for espresso, because that's what we have the biggest demand for, usually our red brick espresso blend. While it is an old machine, it has been fully updated on the technology side, and we do run Cropster on each of the stations to monitor all the temperature probes inside the machine to track profiles as we're roasting. With this roaster, what we tend to do is just roast a full sack of coffee. That's typically gonna be either a 60 kilo bag or a 69 kilo bag, and that's a batch for us. Now we have a little crane set up here that helps us lift the coffee up so we can bring it over to the loader, slice it open, and just drop it in. There's a bit of a complicated workflow around the roaster, designed really to prevent any heavy lifting for any of the production team. So you lift the sack up and you dump it into the loader and that loader sends it up to the hopper above the roaster. You'd then drop it into the drum and roast it. And at the end of roasting, it would spill out into the cooling tray and it's cooled down to room temperature. It then goes through a destoner up into a silo. And from that silo, it's dropped into a blending tray. There, it's blended with other roasts as necessary, and we only blend post-roast, just because it's much easier for us because we're roasting a whole sack at a time. If the blend is red brick, then it gets sent directly to the machine that will package it into two kilo bags, but we'll talk more about that a little later on. Let's talk about the other roaster. It's our UG15, it's another probat. It's the roaster that we started with when we started Square Mile. It roasts a lot of our filter coffees and smaller batches of espresso roasts. After roasting, every batch is weighed, it's part of our kind of quality control, and it's also color tested. And if it's hit its profile, and it's hit its correct end weight and correct color, then it goes to be packed. But if not, it gets set aside and it's tasted before it's packed and shipped. Now we built the roasters a little cupping room near production so that they can use it easily all the time because they're gonna taste every single batch that they roast. Inside that cupping room, they've also got a little setup for brewing. They've got too many EK43 grinders. They've also got my GS3 that I won when I won the World Brewster Championship. It's a machine that's so old, the old firmware running on it has this weird glitch where you can't change the first letter, so I've kind of always left it as Le Quare Mile. Assuming all the coffee tastes good, it's hit all its parameters, then it goes off to be packed, and we've got two packing lines inside the production space. We have a form, fill, and seal machine. Now the coffee comes directly to the machine via a series of pipes that run from the blending tray right into the loader for the machine. And this machine takes a roll of foil, it punches a valve in it, it forms it into a bag shape, it weighs two kilos, drops it in, seals the bag, cuts it off, and then sends it out to be labeled and packed away. Alongside that, we have the smaller packing line there's a loader that brings the coffee up to the top of the weigh and fill, and that weigh and fill will portion out exactly the weight of coffee that we need that we then drop into a bag. And after that bag is sealed and stickered, it goes into the shelves where it's going to be picked. Now at the start of the day, our shelves are bare because we produce pretty much everything to order, and they'll be busy and full in the middle of the day, and then back to being empty at the end of the day. 
From here, coffee will then go out either to online customers or it'll be packed for wholesale customers. Sadly, still often in cardboard, but we're trying to cut it down as much as possible and we use either reusable crates or reusable boxes wherever we can. Downstairs, we also have a workshop space that's full of spare parts for various different machines. And then we can also bring in machines to bench test or we can service them if they need a little TLC. Let's head upstairs. We have a team kitchen, which is a space that we can all cook lunch and ideally eat together or as many of us as possible. There's also the office space, which is not very exciting. And my office is frankly too messy to show you, so we won't go there. We have another cupping room in the building. This is the main team cupping room. Everyone in the entire company could come together and taste in this room, but most of the time it's just used to make fresh pots of batch brew. There's a meeting room that has probably the best view in the roastery, a big window overlooking the roasters themselves that's kind of great to stand and just watch production happening from. And then we also have a training room. There are two stations in here, one with a Black Eagle and a Mythos 2 that we do a lot of our training on, and another one with a White Eagle that will soon be replaced with an Eagle 1. There's an RO at the back of the room, and actually that RO supplies almost all the equipment in the building with water running all over the place from that one central source. We do have a little section for domestic espresso machines, and we have the necessities, of course, to do kind of coffee brewing training, but we try not to have too much kit in the space because it'll just feel really cluttered instead of feeling neat and organized. Now, mostly we use this room for wholesale training, for offering classes to wholesale customers, and occasionally to consumers too. At the end of the long central corridor upstairs, you step out onto a kind of papal balcony above the roasters, which is great for making dramatic entrances. It's one of my favorite spaces in the roastery. I just love to stand there sometimes and just spend a little time watching everything happen, watching production work like a well-oiled machine. And that's it. That's the new Square Mile Roastery. We're very proud of it. We found a space with room for us to grow and there's lots we're going to do and we hope you've enjoyed having this look around and seeing what it is that we do. If you've got questions, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to answer them for you. Let me know if there's things that I didn't quite explain properly or stuff you just wanna know more about. We're always happy to share. I'm gonna say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.